The function g is defined for all real numbers x. Values of g and g prime for selected values of x are given in the table below. <clears throat> Excuse me. Find the x coordinate of each relative extrema, maximum or minimum, of g on the interval and justify your answers. Where do maximums and minimums occur? Maximums and minimums occur, and we can back up a couple lessons for this, and I believe I will. We are going to go to the extreme value theorem, and when we do, we are going to find where extrema occur. And they occur where the derivative equals zero, where the derivative does not exist, or at the endpoints of an interval. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's see. I am going to have, I need to figure out everywhere that the derivative equals zero. Got it, okay? So we have a place where the derivative equals zero. So at x equals zero, I'm sorry, at x equals one, we have a relative, if I could spell it, <laughs> Let me be a little uh, more articulate about it. It corresponds to a relative. Okay, max or min? The derivative changes from positive to negative, so the function changes from increasing to decreasing, so relative max, and it says justify your answers, so let's do it. Relative max, because g prime changes from positive to negative. All right, well, that took care of one of them. We also need to think of where the derivative doesn't exist. There's one, okay? Well, at this point, we transition from a function that is increasing to a function that is increasing. Okay, well, nothing changed, all right? So we are not going to have a maximum or a minimum at x equals negative one. So you might think you're done, but also consider the endpoints of the interval. Ah, okay. And we are gonna include negative three and positive three. So here's what's going on. We have a function that has a, an output of negative four. And then, I don't care about the actual values if the, if the function is negative or positive or whatever. But at, what I do care about is from negative four, the function increases after that. If the function starts at negative four on this side and then increases, that must be a minimum. So here we go. X equals negative four corresponds to a re relative, I'm spelling it wrong again, relative minimum because I lied, not x equals negative four, x equals negative three. I apologize for that, sorry. x equals negative three, that's the value, that's the y value. And from this y value, the function is increasing after that. Okay, notice I'm pointing at the derivative being positive. Corresponds to a relative minimum because um, it is an end point. And oh, I am struggling. My hand is not cooperating with my brain. Better get it together. I gotta go fight crime tonight. Um, end point and G prime, hmm, let's reword this. Yep, no, let's keep it. G prime is positive to the right of x equals negative three. So the function's going up. So because we have some point, here, this, let me show you what I'm, what's going on in my head. At negative three, we're down here at negative four, y value of negative four. And then the derivative is positive. So we have a function that is increasing. 
the function itself is negative up to up to negative one, negative up to negative one, but this is going to be a minimum. Okay, let's figure out what happens here. X equals three corresponds to a relative, I'm gonna spell it right this time, relative, min, max, let's see. Okay, um, at three, picture it if you need to, we have an output of six, there it is. And the derivative is negative going into that six. So going into this value, we have a function that is decreasing, so this one is also a minimum. It is not the minimum, but it is a minimum, relative minimum. Relative min, because it is an endpoint. And g prime is negative to the left of x equals 3.